Hi there, this is Terry from Stamping Magic. Welcome back to my channel. Today's project is this super cute mini domed top treat box. I used some of our brightly gleaming specialty designer series paper for this one and this has copper accents on it. It's beautiful. And I've also used the Christmas gleaming stamp set. So let's get started. These are all the measurements you need for the various elements required to create this project. So if you're interested in reproducing it, you can take a screenshot and refer to it later. I'm using another of the designs from that same brightly gleaming paper pack. Now I've cut this to eight and a half inches by four and three quarters, but just to mention here that if you want to use cardstock to create your box and your standard size is A4, you can just use the width of the card. So that would be eight and a quarter inches instead of the eight and a half. This just means that your half inch side tab will be a quarter inch side tab instead. Place your paper into the Simply Scoreboard with the longest side across the top and score down at 2 inches, 4 inches, 6 inches and 8 inches. Turn your paper and score down at 2 inches. Then turn your paper back to how it was when you first placed it into your Simply Scoreboard. The next set of score lines only want to go down as far as one and a quarter inches. Now you've got four sections across the top of your paper and you've got your half inch or quarter inch side tab. And we're going to score halfway within each of those sections. Now the way I do this, I've got a, a metal ruler that has a flat edge on it on the left hand side. So I butt this up against my left hand ruler at one and a quarter inches and then I can make my score lines. Alternatively, you could just draw a pencil line at one and a quarter inches either on the right side of your paper or if it's a bit too busy like this one, you could do it on the reverse and score it on the reverse. Now you want to make scores at one, three, five and seven inches. This is my template showing you what your score line should look like now, minus the triangular pieces, which we're going to score in a minute. Now you should have two sections running horizontally, and then you've got four sections on each part, plus your side tab. Now we're going to score these uh, triangular sections next. Now I'm going to do this on the reverse because there's no way I'm going to be able to see on the pattern on the right side. So don't worry if you have to turn your paper over and do this. Now I'm going to score from the bottom of that partial score line we did in the centre of each section diagonally back up to the top of the previous score line. OK, and I'm going to do that all the way along. So you should be making four separate score lines. And then coming back, you do exactly the same thing. So you're going to put a diagonal score line up to the top edge of the box um, where that side score is on each section. OK, and here's another look of what it should look like. The next thing we're going to do is punch the holes. Now, you can only punch three of the holes at the moment. We'll do the fourth one later. I'm going to use the sixteenth of an inch hole punch on my crocodile to do this. And I've just set it to a quarter of an inch. So the start of the hole will be a quarter of an inch in on those side score lines. 
okay so make sure you're not punching the hole on those partial score lines it needs to be on the side score lines so each hole is going to straddle those score lines that run all the way down now there's just a little cutting to do so we can put this box together. The first thing is to remove this little corner section and then I'm just going to slightly notch this the remaining tab above it and then I'm going to cut up the score lines to create tabs along the base. Okay so using my scissors I'm going to cut away that little corner section and then notch either end of the remaining part of it, the top and the bottom. Then I'm going to cut up my tabs along the base and I'm removing, I'm making two cuts because I'm removing the score lines here, I like to do that. And then on the first and the third tab you just want to notch the sides. You can then go ahead and fold on all the scored lines and burnish them with your bone folder. Now when you fold the little triangular sections, the partial score line that goes down the centre needs to be a valley and the other two will be mountain folds. Okay, so I'm just slightly creasing that centre one and then I'm going to fold the other two back. And once you've done that, you can squeeze them together and give them just a little pinch. Okay, so again, your outside two are mountains, your middle one is a valley. And then you can squeeze them together and give them a pinch. And you just want to continue that all the way along. You can then go ahead and add glue to your side tab and then stick your opposite end to it. You can now punch your fourth hole ready for the ribbon. So it's on that seam that you just stuck down. Now if you use a cropper dial just be careful, I go out of shot here which is unfortunate, but make sure that the opposite side isn't hooked outside of the gift bag because if it is it will make a hole on the opposite side as well which you don't want. So just punch that one hole at the top of that side seam. Now to fix the base. If you locate the back section of the box which is one of the sections attached to the side seam you want to fold that down first. Now the tabs on either side of it should be the ones that you notched the sides of. Now those are going to be folded in next one at a time and then the front tab and that will leave a nice edge on the front of the box. I'm going to use some of our copper trim for the closure on this box and all you do is weave it in and out of the holes that you punched at the top. So I'm starting to the right of the front panel and going outside in and then I'm just weaving it in and out of all the other holes until I get back round to the front. And then you want to carefully pull it tight and just do a single knot for now. This is the Christmas Gleaming Stamp Set and I'm just going to use this small ornament today. I'm going to stamp on a scrap of Normal Weight Whisper White and I'm just preparing it with my embossing buddy to remove any static because we will be embossing. I'm stamping the first one using Night of Navy ink and then the second one will be stamped with our new Delicata Celestial Copper ink and this is the one I'm going to emboss. So I'm going to cover it with 
copper embossing powder and then melt it with my heat tool. Both of the ornaments can then be punched out using the coordinating ornament punch. I'm going to add the ornaments to my box using some of our now retired copper metallic thread. You could use any thread for this or baker's twine that you have. First off, I'm going to punch a hole at the top of the ornaments using the crocodile again. I've doubled the thread over to make a loop and I'm going to thread that loop through both the holes on the ornaments. Then I'm going to open up the loop and thread the ends through and just pull it gently tight. I just remembered here that I hadn't added my chocolate treat so I'm just going to pop that inside. Then I'll pull my thread together tightly again and just do a single knot. Now I'm going to loosen that little knot just slightly so I can thread one end of the copper thread through it and then I'm going to tie this quite loosely onto the actual copper trim. Then I can pull my copper trim tight again and make a bow. I'm going to add a glue dot underneath one side of that copper ornament, which is on top. And then I can position it so that the navy ornament is offset underneath it. So you can see both of them. And then finally, I'm going to add one of our copper designer star elements just to the centre of that copper ornament. And that's it, my little box is complete. Very quick to do, quite simple, but very pretty. And here's my original one again. And I've made several others this first one, I used the Sailing Home stamp set with the smooth sailing dies and some of our Come Sail Away designer series paper. For this next one, I used the Free as a Bird stamp set, the Bird Ballad designer series paper, and I used the stitch nested label dies to create the tag. And then this one uses the Magnolia Bloom stamp set and some of our Magnolia Lane designer series paper. And this last one is, is my favourite. I use the Animal Outing stamp set to create the tag. Uh, the box is actually created using cardstock so it's really sturdy. This one would be a great one for kids parties. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this project. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and hit that notifications bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. Bye for now.